Thank you for inviting me to participate in this XCMS forum. My name is Gary Patty from Washington University in St. Louis in the departments of genetics, chemistry, and medicine. What I'm going to be talking with you about today is an extension of the original XCMS software known as XC13MS. Starting on the first slide, there are traditionally two ways to use mass spectrometry to study metabolism. There is untargeted metabolomics as depicted on the left, and there is targeted metabolic flux analysis as depicted on the right. And what I'm showing here is an analogy of these two approaches with respect to cars. And this is an analogy that I've borrowed from Ralph de Berendini's that he's published in a recent review in Cell 2012. What untargeted metabolomics traditionally allows us to do is survey a lot of cars without bias. And you can imagine that it's kind of like going into a parking garage and counting how many red cars there are, how many blue cars there are, how many Dodges, how many Fords, etc. But we don't actually learn anything about where those cars are coming from or where they are going. It gives you a static view of what is happening, what the car is, kind of a, an inventory of what cars are there, but it doesn't tell us anything about their destinations. In contrast, an alternative approach known as metabolic flux analysis tells you dynamics about metabolism, and that's shown on the right. And so in this approach, what you do is you introduce a stable isotope into a system, and then you track that stable isotope into some of its downstream products. And that's shown here by these cars moving down the highway. This traditionally is done in a targeted approach. That is, you might add labeled glucose, and you might look at products of glycolysis, or you might look at TCA intermediates, for example. What XC13MS allows you to do is combine these two approaches. It borrows characteristics of both untargeted metabolomics as well as metabolic flux analysis. What we do by using XC13MS is we look in an untargeted context at systems that have been treated with a stable isotope. It allows us to ask questions like, what is that stable isotope being metabolized to? In other words, what is the fate of that stable isotope? And it also allows us to compare how that stable isotope is being metabolized differently across multiple biological samples. I should say that Zhao Jing Hung in my lab is responsible for creating XC13MS. The challenge with introducing stable isotopes into biological systems is demonstrated on this slide. We know that when we don't use any labels at all, these are, this is just cell culture, when we don't use any labels at all and we isolate metabolites and we analyze them by using the standard untargeted metabolomic workflow, what we see is that we can detect on the order of about 36,000 peaks with LCMS. Of course, when you search all of these peaks in metabolite databases, all of the different resources that are available, a great majority, more than 50% of these peaks, don't match any database hit. And of course, this is challenging. We try to deal with these challenges by using the XCMS software, that is, by looking at these metabolites and how they change across different biological conditions. We can pick out metabolites that are most interesting or most hopefully biologically relevant by looking at p-values and fold changes, as reported by XCMS. And this gives us some sort of guide as to what features we should target to try to characterize. The problem when we add isotopes into a biological system is that the number of peaks dramatically increases. So in the same cell system, we go from seeing 36,000 peaks in the non-labeled cell culture to seeing 172,000 peaks when we treat these cells with labeled, uniform labeled glucose. And of course, the reason that we see more peaks is because we are seeing a lot of different isotopologs, a lot of different isotopomers for each one of the downstream products of glucose. Because metabolite databases don't incorporate isotopes, the number of database hits that we get consequently uh, drops dramatically. And so you can see there that the number of database hits is very small. And this is an untenable situation to deal with manually. We have introduced XC13MS software to allow us to take this complicated situation and basically collapse it into something that, like the situation described above. So take something where we're detecting 172,000 peaks, a lot of which correspond to isotopologs, and collapse it to something as shown above so that we can figure out which each peak represents with respect to metabolites that we can search in databases. 
So what does XC13MS do? A demonstration of what XC13MS accomplishes is represented on this slide. We've given cells labeled C13 glucose, and then we've asked, where does that C13 glucose label go? And in this example, we're showing that XC13MS has detected that that label gets in malate. And furthermore, when we compare how much label get in wild type cells versus how much label get in knockout cells, malate, we can see that it varies, particularly for the, the last isotopomer on the far right. We can see that the knockout cells incorporate or produce more triply labeled malate compared to the wild type organism. So this is an example of the XC13, XC13MS output. What does the XC13MS workflow look like? It's shown on this slide. So it's absolutely critical to this platform that you have both an unlabeled control in addition to the labeled experiment. Without the unlabeled control, the platform simply will not work. What you do is you take cells or animals or whatever it is that you're examining and you give them unlabeled precursor and labeled precursor. You treat them absolutely identical, then you do the metabolite isolation and LCMS analysis. You then feed these data into XC13MS, and what XC13MS does is it finds all of what we call feature groups. The feature groups are shown in, on the right there in the slide. Each feature group shows all of the different isotopologs that correspond to that feature. So you can see that in this particular feature group, that the, whatever that feature is, whatever that isotopolog is, it's being labeled to a great extent. You can do the same experiment by introducing the label, but now doing it under some sort of perturbation. And then you can ask where the label goes. And then you can compare those two isotope labeling reports and find where the label goes differentially under a different metabolic perturbation. I'll wrap up by saying that XC13MS is highly complementary to XCMS. What I'm showing you on this slide is results that we obtain by looking at astrocytes that we challenge with the inflammatory stimuli LPS. When we take astrocytes and we challenge them with LPS, there is a metabolic response. And initially what we did is we just took control astrocytes that weren't challenged with LPS and we compared them to astrocytes that were challenged with LPS. And as shown on the right side of that Venn diagram, we detected 37 features that were changing. Now, at the same time that you challenge the astrocytes with LPS, if you also then introduce uniform C13 labeled glucose, and then you ask where that uniform C13 labeled glucose goes, what you can see is that the labeled glucose goes to different places depending on whether or not the LPS is there. So cells that are introduced to uniform labeled glucose without LPS shuttle glucose to some pathways, but there are 123 things that get differentially, differentially labeled when astrocytes are in the presence of LPS or not. That is, glucose has slightly different fates, 123 different fates, when the astrocytes are treated with the LPS inflammatory stimuli. So I think these platforms are highly complementary. I think it could be an important piece to the overall metabolomic workflow. And thank you for listening.